Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It's Cassie, Dust Roses. Uh, we are back with part three of the start to finish kitchen junk journal. Um, so this video, we're in this video, we are going to uh, be finishing up some embellishment on the pages. And then uh, we'll also do the stitching, like stitching all the pockets up and adding some fabric and ruffles and uh, tabs and whatnot to the side of the journal. Um, so to start off, I am just like flipping through the pages and adding some embellishments to pages that I feel still need something. Uh, for example, this page, uh, I wanted to kind of show that there was a pocket and so I thought I would add some of this braided trim. Um, it actually is really pretty. It has a little velvet ribbon woven into it. Um, so I just wanted to add a little strip of this to the edge of the pocket to show that there was a pocket there and it's not just a really weird looking page. Uh, so I'm just adding that with some 3-in-1 glue, which is basically the same as Fabri-Tac. And uh, then I'm just checking the other side to make sure that that side is also kind of embellished to show that there's a pocket there. Um, and in the last video, we had added that little coupon to the edge. So now I want to add some journaling space to the bottom of this page and kind of cover up those like little half pictures at the bottom. Um, so I'm just going to like go through my little stash over there in my box and pick out some pieces to cover up that bottom section. Uh, I did land on this coop, this uh, receipt, if I can remember what things are called, this receipt, and I do pick um, some vintage wallpaper uh, to finish off that pocket. So yeah, I really hope that you guys are still enjoying this series. I'm having so much fun making this journal. Um, it is for a design team project for Crafty Lisa's Vintage uh, for her upcoming Yummy Kitchen Ephemera sale, which is happening this weekend, in fact. Um, so head on over to the link that I've put in the description box to her profile on Instagram and request a tag uh, if you're interested in picking up some of these ephemera pieces that I'm using to embellish this journal with. Um, so on the other side of this page, I am just going to kind of do the same thing uh, using just different papers. <laughs> uh, so I, I just wanted to add some journaling space, like I said, to the bottom of that, uh, that page. And I do just decide to use um, some little tiny ledger page, actually. I don't know where I got these pages, but they were just kind of floating around my stash. And I thought these would be great to make tags with, like add a journaling spot to different pages. And so I just kind of kept them on my desk to use in this journal. Um, so I'm just kind of doing the same process, like tearing off a piece and just gluing it down. Um, and then I do use some handmade paper from Rose Hill Paper, Heather, and I've linked her shop in the description box of the video too. So kind of my philosophy on embellishing journal pages uh, while I'm making a journal is to do the initial like page folding, make all my pockets that uh, kind of come naturally from folding my pages. And then I will go through and like do a first pass of the journal and um, like kind of see how it feels, see if it has too many pages without pockets or too many pages with pockets and um, kind of adjust or reorder, uh, reorganize the pages from there. And then um, 
if I still have any areas that have too many pages without something like right here, uh, I did decide to use this uh, piece of vintage linen. So it's um, got some cross stitch or embroidered flowers. It was a tea towel, I think, and I had cut it for the journal cover and decided not to use it. Um, so I just think that it would make a perfect little fabric cover or a fabric um, pocket inside the journal. So I just used a little bit of that 3-1 glue around the edges and I will go back and stitch them but um, the, the glue just serves to hold it in place while I cut it down uh, and just adds a little extra security in holding it in place. Um, so yeah, I, I just go through my journal a couple of times and add things as I feel like there's too much of a gap or rearrange my pages if I feel there's too much too close together. Um, so I kind of, uh, as a rule, uh, kind of go like two pages, maybe at most, without a pocket. Um, so like it would be one page spread and then on the next page spread I would have a pocket or a tuck spot or a belly band or something like that. Um, now on pages that have nothing, I typically add a ruffle or um, like a tab to them or I'll add something that's just clipped onto the page. Um, but I don't like to have a pocket or a tuck spot on every single page because I feel like it leaves the end like the the person who purchases the journal it leaves them very little room to personalize it uh, and so I want my journals to be like I want them to be my artwork like something that I've made uh, but I do want them to also be customizable by the end recipient if that makes if that makes sense um, so I try not to over embellish the pages to begin with and I want a lot of my ephemera and embellishments to be removable. Um, so that's why like I will add in um, like giant journaling cards that add a pocket but they're clipped on so they're not permanently attached to the page. Um, so that's kind of my thinking behind how I embellish my journals. Um, but yeah, sorry if you can hear Lennon. He's trying to lay down for a nap and I have the monitor on <laughs> while I'm doing boy my voiceover. Um, he just makes these really cute squilly noises sometimes. Um, okay, so uh, a while back I did post kind of the same concept of uh, like a flip out with one of these vintage seed packets. Lisa sent me like four or five different seed packets and so I wanted to use... A lot of them or several of them in making this journal because I think they're great they're graphical um, they are like they can be an envelope or they can be a tuck spot or a pocket or a flip out or anything like they really lend themselves well to using for journal making so a while back I had posted on Instagram um, this like fold out uh, but it's also a tuck spot or a pocket on the back side um, uh, so it's a fold out little notebook, I guess. Um, so I'm just wanting to show you guys how I made that and, uh, my stapler is too small. <laughs> so I grabbed the, I grabbed the bigger one and, um, and yeah, so I'm just stapling a few little sheets of, uh, like writing space to make a little booklet and I'll just glue that to one side of the seed packet. Um, which I had cut open and kind of glued to uh, the other side of the page to create a tuck spot. Um, so yeah, I'm just gluing the back page of my little notebook to the seed packet um, so that when it is folded closed, it just becomes like this little booklet uh, that's attached to the page. And then on this other side, uh, it's actually a tuck spot on the back. So just a really cool concept, I think, to add a tuck spot and also some extra journaling space um, with some like hidden journaling space, really. 
Um, so yeah, that I think is the last kind of page that I do end up embellishing at this point. Um, like I'm just doing my little flip through and making sure I don't want to add anything else. I do audition a few things, um, but I don't think that I actually add anything else right now. Um, so after this, I am going to take my pages to my sewing machine to like start stitching up pockets. Okay, so we are ready to start stitching all our pockets and tuck spots. Um, my own personal choice is to do them separately uh, before I do any of my um, ruffles or tabs. Um, and right then I was just showing you that I do backstitch at the beginning and end of my pockets and tuck spots usually. <laughs> Uh, so it depends on how, I guess, fragile the paper is. Um, so on this page, this was the one that I added that French um, can label to. Uh, so I wanted to show you guys how it created like the double tuck spot with the front and the back tuck uh, just by adding that label. Um, so the page itself was just folded over uh, as if it had a fold out. And then I glued, in the last video, I glued that label to the page to create the second tuck spot on the front side. Um, so then this was the page that we just embellished. I just stitched on the sides. Um, this one I am going to stitch. Sorry, I wish now that I'm doing my voiceover, I realize that my sewing machine was in frame but not in frame enough <laughs> um, so I apologize that I'm not like actually showing you guys how I'm stitching everything um, but yeah hindsight uh, anywho in the next video or the next series that I do I think I'm going to do another one of these series uh, I will actually make sure that my sewing machine is totally in frame um, but yeah, I just wanted to run a stitch on either side of that little center binding piece that we added to those two pages to hold them together in the last video. Uh, so it was glued, um, but yeah, I just wanted to add the stitches to add some extra security to that. And then I did just run a stitch on the top and bottom to, uh, like embellish the closure on the pockets. Like they were glued closed, but. Um, I just think the stitches kind of add that little extra touch. Um, so here, here's what I was talking about. Like sometimes I'll just like flip through and realize that I don't like how many pages don't have something. <laughs> um, so I decided as I'm stitching my pockets together that I wanted to add an extra little corner tuck to this page. Um, so I'm just adding this vintage recipe card and embellishing it a little bit um, and it actually ends up being a double tuck spot uh, so I use this butter label to create kind of a second tuck spot um, and I just glue it shut or glue it glue it down into a tuck spot uh, and then use a little bit of like masking tape I guess to um, add some extra security to the top of the tuck spot uh, because the label is a little bit more fragile than I probably would have liked. Um, but that's kind of the nature of vintage things. Like sometimes they're more fragile than they look. <laughs> um, so, so yeah, I'm just gluing it into a tuck spot and then I'll add a little bit of masking tape. Uh, and then I ink it and just stitch it directly onto the page.
okay, so now we're to the page with the big fabric or a fabric pocket. Um, and so what I do uh, to any page that has like a pocket on, actually my sewing machine ran out of bobbin thread, so I reloaded it <laughs> like magic. You guys didn't have to watch that. Um, okay, so uh, I, yeah, I usually stitch the larger of the two pockets first or like if it's a belly band on one side and a pocket on the other, I'll stitch one side of the belly band and then just kind of um, run a longer stitch for the pocket. Uh, so in this case, it's a pocket on one side and a pocket on the other. And so I just stitched down the fabric pocket and then I closed the folded pocket on the other side and then I'll stitch that separately. Um, so I realized that you can do them both at the same time, but I have had pages like completely mangled, um, by trying to do both at the same time. So I always just separate it and it turns out okay. So, uh, again, that's my personal choice. You can experiment and do it your own way. Um, but this is how I do it. So, uh, and I do know that my way is probably pretty beginner friendly, I would think, um, like for stitching multiple pockets on the same page, I guess. Uh, so here's a belly band example. This belly band is on one side and then there's a pocket, like a folded pocket on the other. So I just stitch from the top of the belly band all the way down the page to close up the pocket. Uh, and I hope yeah, I showed you guys kind of how that's closed up there. So I really, really love this page, uh, like the pattern on it. It's one of the William Morris pattern papers uh, from my digital that I released last week. Um, and I just love it. Uh, I think that it fits so well with the journal and um, it was kind of... I, like I had been collecting those patterns for quite a while and I knew that I wanted to use them in my own journals and my own journaling uh, but it just fits so well with this theme that uh, I decided to go ahead and launch it um, and so yeah you can pick up that digital and any of the other digitals that I have used in this journal um, from my Etsy shop and I've kind of I think linked all the kits that I used in the description box of the video um, but yeah that's it for kind of stitching the pages uh, stitching the pockets and tuck spots closed I'm just going to trim up these little strings that are hanging off um, I don't worry too much about trimming strings trimming the extra threads off um, like, I kind of think that it adds to, like, that handmade feel uh, to have them hanging, but also, I, like, I don't want them to get tangled up. So, I do trim them a bit, usually, um, and now we're just going to uh, stitch around the outside of the journal cover, uh, and I'm just running a straight stitch. You can do a zigzag or whatever stitch pattern you want. Uh, I typically only use straight stitch. Uh, straight stitch because it's just my personal preference um, and yeah so I'm just going to straight stitch all the way around the journal cover and yeah then that will be totally done until we're ready to stitch the signature in. So I really love how this journal cover turned out. Um, I'm just kind of pulling out any threads that got kind of caught in the final stitching around. Um, and then I did want to show you guys kind of how that last little, or the pocket and tuck, uh, well, double pocket, triple pocket tuck spot <laughs> uh, inside the journal cover turned out. Um, and so now I'm just going to pull out some 
fabrics and uh, trims that I want to use for my ruffles and tabs. And yeah, so I'll just touch on the types of fabrics that I'm picking. Um, I did choose a few different types of laces, some vintage cotton, some vintage, uh, like, I don't know what it's called, woven trim, um, and some sari silk ribbon. Uh, and yeah, so I do, I do add a, uh, a tip in actually, I forgot to add a tip in. I wanted to, and it just totally slipped my mind as I was making the journal to do it. Um, so I use this like big, thick, um, what is it? Eyelet lace piece, uh, which was reclaimed from like a tablecloth, I think. Uh, but I'm just going to tear it because I think that it, I don't know. I like, I like the torn edge on my fabric. So I usually tear them if I can. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to stitch that over this page and, uh, add a little secret journaling spot to this page with this tip in. Okay. Now we're going to start making some tabs and ruffles. <laughs> Um, so typically I will start at the beginning of my journal and just kind of work my way from front to back. Um, and I typically try to do my tabs in thirds. So one in the top third of the page, the next one in the middle third, and then the last or the third one in the bottom third of the page. Uh, so that's like a very easy beginner friendly tip. Uh, if you're new to adding tabs and ruffles to your page, just think of your page as like divided up. Uh, and you can do it in half, you can do it in quarters, it doesn't really matter as long as you're just kind of um, going along with that same pattern, I guess. Uh, and that, that will prevent um, like too many tabs in the bottom part of the page and not enough in the top. If you're just kind of going along, uh, like starting at the top, middle, or bottom, and then just going in order. Uh, so a lot of times with my laces, I will just add a tiny bit of glue to hold it in place. Um, and I do this with some fabrics too, depending on how like shifty they are. Uh, but I just want the fabric to stay stay put while I'm starting stitching. Um, so I'll just add a little tiny bit of glue to hold it in place uh, so that I can stitch it properly without the fabric moving around on me. Um, so uh, yeah, I'm just going to go through and cut my tabs and ruffles. Hopefully you guys can see enough of my process to kind of get the gist of how I do things. Um, this ends up being like a very, very wide tab. Uh, I've been kind of on a tab kick lately. I don't do very many ruffles anymore. Um, I think that ruffles, like, I think they're great. I love ruffles. I like how they look. Uh, but just for my own preference on how I make my journals, I like the way tabs look more right now. Um, and I'll probably go back to ruffles. I don't know. Uh, I just kind of shift around depending on how I like the fabric. Um, also, if it's a printed fabric, like this fabric actually has these really cute flowers on it uh, that match the color scheme really well of the journal, the color scheme of the journal really well. <laughs> um, so yeah, I like how the, that pattern looks and I don't want to lose any of the pattern to ruffling it. Um, so like ruffling it kind of makes it jumble up and you can't really make out what you're looking at, I guess. Uh, yeah, so I will sometimes decide to ruffle things or make them into tabs based on uh, if I'm going to lose any of the pattern or not. Um, yeah, so typically with thicker trims, 
such as this one, uh, I do just fold it over the page. I don't worry about adding an extra ruffle or anything, or an extra fold, rather. Uh, and that way, um, it just kind of stays flatter, I guess. I don't, want my, I don't want my journal to become a gator mouth just from adding my trims to the edge of the page. Uh, and here again with the non-ironed, <laughs> sorry, Zilk ribbon, um, really I should just take a day and iron all my ribbons and just be done with it. But, uh, here we are, I'm fighting with the really wrinkly, sorry, Zilk ribbon again. Um, but it doesn't turn out too bad, I think. Uh, okay, so I'll stop jabbering now, set the rest to music until I'm done adding all the tabs and ruffles, and and yeah, hopefully you guys like it. Um, uh, I do create kind of a layered tab out of this eventually, um, but to start, I do just add it to the page the way it is, and I just like literally crumped it, crumpled it up and um, and yeah, added it to the edge of the page like that. Uh, okay, so now I'll stop jabbering and let you guys watch.
when I use sari silk ribbon, I'll often leave a tail uh, on the end of the ribbon and uh, I'll tie some knots in it or uh, this is the first time I've actually stitched it back to create kind of a loop. Um, and I have an idea. I have these little vintage um, baby spoons that I think I want to add to this page on the journal. Um, so I think that this little loop at the bottom of the page will be perfect for doing that. Uh, and yeah, so hopefully that works out. It's an experiment again that I'll do in the next video. Uh, and so I'm just flipping through after I've kind of finished the, like adding all the ruffles and tabs in, and I do decide to just add that, uh, last little bit of this mirrored sari trim to this page. And it actually ended up to being like a huge hassle. Like I ate my page five times and, uh, it turns out my sewing machine was not loaded properly. So, uh, yeah, I fought for that tab you guys, like it was, it was battle. Um, but yeah, I'm just going to finish kind of flipping through and making sure everything looks right. Uh, I did just fold this little tab over to kind of cover the eaten part. Um, <laughs> uh, like that's a tip too. If you kind of eat the back of the page a little bit, uh, just glue something over it. It's fine. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. Hopefully you've enjoyed it gain some inspiration and I will see you in the next one.